This lesson is for FST Lesson 2.8 on choosing a good model. We'll be working with three models today, linear, exponential, and quadratic. And the way that we choose the best model is to graph the residuals. So a quick reminder for students on what a residual is. It's the observed values minus the predicted. The observed values are the original y values that we worked with. So that's the data, the y values that were there in the original table. The predicted values are the new y values that you get after you plug in the original x's into the model or into the equation. So we're going to look at residual plots today. And the residual plot will use the original x values with the residual. And we're going to see how those residuals look when we graph them. Remember that since the residual measures how far apart the data is from the line, we want the dots to be as close to the x-axis as possible. So if the residuals are clustered around the x-axis, then that model is likely a good fit for the data. So if we were looking at these three examples here, or these three residual plots, let's say that this plot came from the linear model, this one from the exponential, and the last one from the quadratic. The one that would be the best choice for the best model would be the first one, the linear. Not because the graph looks like a linear line, but because the residuals have been minimized and are as close to the x-axis compared to the other two graphs. This one is clearly forming a parabola shape, but that's not what we're looking for. We're not looking for a particular model itself. We're looking for the residuals to be small. And so we want all the dots to be clustered around the x-axis. Clearly, these residuals are all over the place. Same thing for this last one. A lot of these residuals are really spread out and scattered all over the place. Eventually it may turn into a good model, but to start out with it's definitely not matching the data very well. Students need to keep in mind that sometimes there is no good model, and so I would encourage students to read page 136 to help reinforce that idea. When we graph residuals today, we're going to get the TI Inspire calculator to do most of the work for us. We're going to type in the data on a list and spreadsheet page. It's real important that students remember to start a brand new document when they do this. If you add a tab to an existing document, uh, it will run into some error messages and that just frustrates the process. When you're typing in your data into your list and spreadsheet, please label the A column with an X and the B column with a Y. It makes the graphing step in step two go a lot more smoothly. So add a new tab by hitting Control i and choose Data and Statistics. On here you're going to graph the data or have the calculator graph the data. So let me illustrate what that looks like, but first let me show you the data that we're going to use. So start a new, this is number 9 from the students. I want you to go ahead and start a brand new document of a list and spreadsheet, and then you're going to type in the data that's here. Keep in mind that the starting date is 1920, excuse me, the starting date is 1900, so the x values that students should be using should be the years after 1900. So the actual x's you're going to type in are here in green. And then students need to type in the y values as well. You can also get the data out of page 138 calculator. Data even more so than what you can physically see here making sure that the X and the Y are there. So I'm going to go ahead and hit now Control i to add a new tab. And for my new tab, I chose Data and Statistics. You'll see a bunch of random dots. Go ahead and click in the lower middle of where the X axis would be, and you want to choose X. The data should respond, and then go ahead and on the left-hand side, click for the Y value, and the data should graph itself for you. So for question number nine, you're going to want to go ahead and make a sketch of that. Keep in mind that this line at the bottom here is not a random line, that is your x-axis. So pause the video right now and do a quick sketch of what that looks like. As you're doing that, um, hopefully it makes sense that it's probably not a straight line definitely looks like it could be maybe half of a parabola or potentially an exponential. So let's go ahead and take a look at the rest of the steps now and see what we're going to do next. So let's go back here and let's take a look at the list. So 
After we get the data graphed onto a data and statistics page, we're going to be using Menu Analyze. It's important for students to write down the models for each as well as show or copy the residual plot that's given. Uh, we're going to do this three times to illustrate each one individually. It is possible to do all three together, but I think you'll find it's easier if you just do them one at a time. So just remember menu analyze regression, then menu analyze residuals, and then we're going to hide each one as we go. So I'm going to go ahead and try that now on my calculator. So from here I'm going to do menu, analyze, regression, and I'm going to choose linear to start. Now I think linear is probably not a good model here. I think quadratic or exponential might be a better choice, but just for the sake of practice I want you to try all three today. So you'd copy down this equation onto your paper as the linear model, and now we're going to do menu, analyze, residuals, and residual plot to get the actual residual graph. So then you'd copy down that graph as well. So once you have that written down, it doesn't really help you very much to have that information. We need it now to be compared to other information. So we're going to hide the linear information, and we're going to move on to quadratic. So to hide it, we're going to go Menu, Actions, Hide Linear. We're back to where we started from. So now we're going to do Menu, Analyze, Regression, and we're going to choose Quadratic this time. Write down the quadratic model or the quadratic equation onto your paper. And let's take a look at the picture here. It definitely looks like the quadratic might be a good choice. To make sure, we're going to write down the residual plot by doing Menu, Analyze, Residuals and make a quick sketch of that residual plot onto your paper as well. Making note of the fact that the scale is important here, you're not able to choose the scale, so we have to trust the scale that the calculator is choosing for us. You need to record that when we write our pictures. So that's the quadratic model. Let's hide that. Menu, Actions, Hide. And then let's do it again for exponential. Menu, Analyze, Regression, Exponential. To get the residuals, menu, analyze, residuals, residual plot. And then let's make a quick sketch of that as well. So when you're all done, you should have these three pieces. When I did the screenshot for these, the original data plot is there as well with the line of best fit. Know that that is not required for students to draw each and every time. It is the, the residual plot is the one that really matters for this lesson. So as you look at the residual plots and as you pay attention to the scale, definitely this scale here is not the one we want to use, or this residual plot is not a good one, meaning that this is not a good model, because the scale is going all the way up to 400,000 and these are clearly not hugging the x-axis. If we go to the next one, this is a much smaller scale at 70,000 to the top and the bottom. And as we go from left to right here, these coordinates are actually becoming closer and closer to the x-axis. So this one looks favorable and might be uh, the better choice. Between these two, linear and quadratic, definitely the quadratic is the better choice so far. Now let's look at our last one. This is the residual plot and the model for the exponential equation. And this one potentially looks like it could be the best one. All the dots here are very close to the x-axis. However, the scale we're using here indicates a very large number, the largest of the three, at negative 600,000. So there is potential here that these dots are actually well above the x-axis, if we could identify the scale a little bit better here. Uh, so definitely these numbers are above, uh, because the scale that we're using here is fairly large. In particular, as you move to the right, these dots are getting further and further away from the x-axis. These are going above and these are going below, and well below. So I would say if I had to pick between the three, this would be the one that I would choose as the best model. Quadratic is the best model because the residual plot is the most close to the x-axis.